Today's message title. What is it? Today's message title is Christ and the inheritance of God. What is an inheritance? It's something that is given to you, uh, usually from your parents, right? Not necessarily, but usually from your parents. That's inheritance. In the uh, ancient times, um, it was usually the land and also the houses. They were uh, inherited down the generations. Nowadays, uh, yes, houses are still inherited as well as land, but uh, nowadays it's usually uh, finances, money, right? Uh, I read on the newspaper that uh, pets are also inherited. So, how many of you have actually inherited a pet? <laughs> oh, Bobby Jean? What did you inherit? A dog or a cat? A cat. A cat? Oh, how nice. <laughs> yeah, so, like I said, pets are also inherited. <laughs> um, but uh, we also have an inheritance from God. Did you know that? Mm-hmm. That's what the Bible says. Because we're children of God, we will be inheriting the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. Uh, let me read the introduction. After the plague, what, what kind of plague am I talking about? Remember uh, last Sunday, uh, Israelites... Uh, we, we read uh, the passages uh, from Numbers 25. Actually, uh, Isaac read those passages for us. Uh, but the Israelites, uh, they fell into idolatry, right? And God sent them a plague and a lot of people died. So that plague, talk about that plague. God commands Moses to take a second census. Remember 38 years ago there was that first census and all the male who were 20 years old and older were counted. And there were men who were able to fight uh, in the war. But this is a second census. You know what a census is, right? Uh, we have little, little ones here, but census is counting the people. Uh, easily uh, put. That's what census uh, is about. So a second census was taken. Inheritances were to be given according to the census. So a uh, larger land were given to uh, larger groups. Uh, that was uh, one of the major reasons why they took the census. Our inheritance depends on the promise of God. This is from Galatians 3.18, but don't you think it's interesting? Uh, Israelites, uh, have they crossed the river Jordan or not? Right? Uh, yes, they are. In a way, they are already in the land of Canaan, but the main land is across from the River Jordan. Right? And they haven't crossed that river yet. And already, God is telling them that He's going to uh, allot the land according to the names, uh, according to the size of the groups. What, what does that tell us? God will keep His promise. Already, over 400 years ago, God told Abraham that He will give this land of Canaan to His descendants. And His descendants uh, were, of course, the Israelites. And so here they are. They have not conquered the land yet. But already God is saying, it's, it's as good as yours. And he's already talking about uh, allotting 
the land, sharing the land. So our inheritance depends on the promise of God because God does not change. His promises will never ever change. And God will keep His promise. Our faith depends on the promise of God. A lot of churches talk about the assurance of salvation. How can you have such an assurance? Because God does not change and His promises will not change. He promised us, John 1, 12, if you believe in the Son of God, if you believe in the name of Jesus Christ, you will become children of God. I kind of paraphrased it, but that's what it says, John 1, 12. For those who believed in those who believed in His name, God gave them the right to become children of God. And that is a promise. We can have assurance of salvation because God is God of the promise. Because it does not change, His words will not change, especially His promises, His covenants will not change. You believe it, it's yours. Therefore, you can have assurance of salvation. It's very important. Apostle Paul talks about full armor of God. In the armor, there is that helmet. And it's called the helmet of salvation. You don't have assurance of salvation, then you're going to be attacked in your mind. So it's very important that you know what salvation is and uh, to have that assurance of salvation. And our salvation does not uh, depend on our works. It never did. All this week, I sinned. I made a lot of mistakes. Your salvation does not depend on your works. This week, I did not experience any kind of miracle or healing. I did not experience any uh, sensation. Uh, I did not experience that electricity going through my body. That's okay. Your salvation does not depend on your sensation, on your spiritual experiences does not depend on your works. It depends on the promise of God. The promise of God says, if you believe in my Son, Jesus Christ, if you believe that He solved your problem of sin, your problem of Satan, your problem of separation from God, then you have the right to become children of God. So we are children of God, and we start from there. God promised the land of Canaan as inheritance to Israelites. This was over 400 years ago. Abraham believed it, and God credited it to him as his righteousness. God promised heaven as inheritance to Abraham. It's from Hebrews 11.6. Abraham did not only believed that the land of Canaan was to be his descendants, but he also believed that uh, he was going to inherit the kingdom of God. He was going to inherit a heavenly city. Because he, he believed in that promise, God gave it to him. God always, always fulfills his promise, and we... Uh, read that uh, we read that passage from numbers 23:19 God is not like people he's not like humans humans change all the time even us uh, you know, we're children of God but uh, we change at times right <laughs> But God does not change, and His promise will not change, and He is sure to keep His promise. Do we keep our promises all the time? We try to, but not all the time. Uh, one of the reasons uh, being that uh, we, are, we are unable to keep our promises, right? You said you will be here, but your car broke down, so 
you couldn't keep your promise. And that's okay. Uh, we're not perfect, nobody is, but God is perfect. And He's almighty, and He's able, perfectly able to keep all His promises. Our inheritance is the kingdom of God. That's what Matthew 25, 34 says. One becomes a child of God through faith in Christ. And I emphasize this a lot. Christ, Jesus Christ, is the covenant or the promise of God. In Him, we have God's promise or promises. What promises am I talking about once again? Victory over sin and Satan. Emmanuel, God with us at all times in Jesus Christ. Those are the promises that we have in Jesus Christ. And that's why I say that Jesus Christ himself is the covenant of God. So our faith is covenantal faith. It's not a faith that relies on our spiritual experiences. It's not the kind of faith that relies on our own works. All the other religions talk about works. You gotta work it out. You gotta work hard to gain your salvation. That's not Christianity. All the other religions talk about spiritual experiences. You think Buddhist monks are. No, <laughs> uh, no offense. <laughs> All the people of other religion also experience healing and miracles. They do. But Christianity depends on the promise of God. And you believe it, it's yours. Salvation is yours. Kingdom of God is yours. It's your inheritance. But how can I be sure that I inherited the kingdom of God? Holy Spirit. God gave us Holy Spirit and He's a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance. It's from Ephesians 1, 13 to 14. God gave us the Holy Spirit. He's a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance. Our salvation. Once again, how can you experience the Holy Spirit? Uh, some people rely on their senses. What if you Stop feeling the Holy Spirit. Has the Holy Spirit left you? <laughs> no, it, uh, it's assurance that God gives, right? Do I have the Holy Spirit or not? Uh, that assurance comes from God. It comes from the Holy Spirit Himself. Uh, once again, uh, it's all about the promise of God, right? It's not about your experiences. It's not about your works. But uh, it's all about God's promise in Jesus Christ. Our earthly inheritance is for world evangelization. Some people say that Christianity talks too much, way too much about pie in the sky. Have you, have you heard that expression before? Pie in the sky. Right? Well, I guess uh, Jamie had heard about that before. <laughs> right? I saw talk. Right? You guys talk too much. And it's all about just words. And, right? Uh, it's, not, it's not real. Right? Uh, that's what pie in the sky means. Right? <laughs> it's all the talk. And not the real stuff, right? Uh, but um, you know what? Uh, heaven is real. I I know it. God gave me the assurance. I have experienced it. Uh, and heaven is real. Uh, but at the same time, there is that earthly inheritance that God gives us. Like uh, the land of Canaan, God gave the land of Canaan to the Israelites, right? And it was not an imaginary land. It was real land, right? Uh, and they had to fight uh, to, 
you know, get that uh, land of Canaan. Uh, but uh, God ge- also gives us earthly inheritance. Uh, for what purpose? For world evangelization, for evangelism and mission. There is a God given field of evangelism for every believer. There is that field. I don't know what your field is. In my case, it's healing. Uh, I've been, uh, let me be uh, very honest with you, I've been sick all my life. Even as a little child, I used to get sick all the time, right? Uh, But uh, praise God, God healed me many, many times in the name of Jesus Christ. And there were times when I complained. Why do I get sick all the time? Even as a little baby, I was always sick. (laughs) Uh, Why? So that I may experience the healing power of Jesus Christ. And through me, and so that through me, other people can experience that healing that comes through the name of Jesus Christ. I never thought that I would be doing healing ministry. Uh, just years ago back, I never thought that uh, I would be doing healing ministry, ministry the rest of my life. But I've been doing this ministry for already uh, for uh, eight years now, since uh, 2009. So, uh, yes, about eight years. So there is that field. That field of evangelism. God-given field of evangelism for every believer. And our earthly inheritance for evangelism will come from that field. So see everything through the eyes of evangelism. Whatever you do, it can be a channel, an instrument for evangelism, for saving lives. What is your field? What is your God-given talent? God can very well use those for His kingdom. He can very well use those to save lives. I want to talk about my mom. Uh, She's been a a homemaker all her life, uh, except for one single year. I remember when she worked for... Uh, a company. Uh, my mom used to sell blankets for one year, <laughs> but they they were very expensive blankets, like made, uh, blankets made of silk, uh, very very nice ones. Uh, but except for that single year, my mom had been a homemaker all her life. What can a homemaker do? A lot of different things. Well, she raised me and my brother to begin with. But she also um, held Bible studies, small groups. You know that our church uh, emphasizes small groups a lot. We started out with uh, three different small groups. Uh, And my mom, uh, she's uh, been leading uh, small groups for over 30 years. At least for 35 years she had been leading small groups. She's leading one right now, even now. So every Tuesday, uh, people come to our uh, house. And uh, she fed them, she served them, and uh, in doing that, she also shared the Word of God. She shared Jesus Christ. And many people accepted Jesus Christ through my mom. Many people were healed, especially depression. A lot of people who had depression were healed just by coming to uh, this small group that my mom led. So uh, as we say all the time, there is power in small groups. There is power in Jesus Christ. But when that Jesus Christ is proclaimed uh, in a small group, His power is released to individuals. and uh, a lot of people who attended that, uh, that small group uh, ended up helping my mom 
Uh, even my dad. Uh, it was it was interesting because my dad was a banker for like 30 years, right? And he had no ties. He had he. Uh, he didn't have a good background, but uh, interestingly, the ladies who came to my mom's small group, right, they helped, uh, they kind of talked to their husbands, and some of the husbands were influential. <laughs> that kind of helped my dad with his banking business, right? Uh, you know what? God gives you connections. Right. Uh, if you receive spiritual strength, uh, you uh, will have mental power. It sounds funny, but it's true. You will receive mental power, emotional, uh, mental strength, emotional strength. You will uh, be. You will become wiser. Right. You will become more and more knowledgeable, and you will become healthier and healthier. And you will begin to make more and more money. Not that money is the most important thing in your life, but it will happen. And then, you know what? Last but not least, you will be making more and more connections. God created us as social beings. Uh, I used to be a loner. I was a loner all my life. But I'm making more and more connections with other people. And... A lot of them are actually helping me with my ministry, with my healing ministry, and even my church ministry. And that's how God works. But it all starts with you receiving spiritual, uh, spiritual strength. Rare. <laughs> spiritual strength. <laughs> through Jesus Christ. In your small groups. In worship. And that will translate to your intellectual power. And then you will become stronger and stronger, healthier and healthier physically. And uh, um, you will uh, begin to make uh, more and more money. And then, last but not least, I, I want to uh, emphasize this, last but not least, you'll make more and more connections with other people. You, you will become more and more social. That part is very important, especially if you want to become a spiritual leader. If you want to become a spiritual leader. God has never, ever used a loner to extend his kingdom on earth. Uh, our earthly inheritance for evangelism will come from your field of expertise. Your God-given field. It will come from your God-given talent. We will inherit the kingdom of God through faith in Christ. So if you think that you don't have any earthly inheritance right now, uh, don't forget, you will, you will inherit the kingdom of God at the end. But even on this earth, God will also give us earthly inheritance from our field of evangelism. From your field of evangelism. Uh, there is a, uh, I don't know if you have heard of a market, it's called Hanam Market. And it started out as a small store in Los Angeles, but they're everywhere now. They are in Orange County, uh, Buena Park, Orange County. They are in Diamond Bar, they're everywhere. Right? And uh, one of the owners, there are two owners. One of the owners read my book. And he was inspired. He bought two to three hundred books. And he passed out those books to all his employees. And he, he passed them out. He's still passing them out <laughs> here and there. <laughs> he had nothing to do with it. I didn't know him. 
he had nothing to do with me. Uh, but even tonight, uh, this evening, there's a meeting. And my dad's going to go there. Because uh, I, I want to rest this evening. <laughs> so my dad's going there. And he's going to talk about me and my story. Uh, because uh, this, uh, this person, this uh, market owner, wants to pass my books out for free. Uh, so, uh, that's what happens, right? People whom you don't know, they want to help you. They want to help to spread your ministry. Uh, they want to be instruments for the kingdom of God. So, uh, a lot of things that I uh, talk about actually are my own testimonies. Uh, social connection, very important. I'm not talking about uh, SNS, <laughs> but social connections that you make, very important. Uh, you know what? I do healing ministry, but the last part that needs to be healed is what? Is your social life. Who you hang out with. Some people are not loners, but they hang out with the wrong group of people. I meet them all the time. There's a guy, uh, I, I can't say his name, but started doing drugs uh, when he went to high school, and now he has a serious, serious mental challenge. And he's still hanging out with the wrong group of people. <laughs> So first, it's spiritual healing. And then it's mental, emotional healing. And then it's healing of the finances. As funny as it may sound, yes. You need to learn to manage your finances. Very important. Most young people nowadays, right, uh, they can work. They know how to work. They don't know how to manage their finances. I was one of them. I was broke. I had thousands of dollars in debt, credit card debts. I was getting calls all the time. They were harassing me. <laughs> I, was, I used to get stressed a lot. The next stage in healing, by the way, uh, they can all happen simultaneously at the same time. But the next stage is, heal, last but not least, what? Your social life. Uh, if you are a loner, you need to hang out with people. You need to associate with people. You need to make relationship. relationship. And you are not a loner, but you are hanging out with the wrong group of people. You know what? That needs to be healed. Because either you influence them or you will be influenced. Usually it's it's you that's getting influenced. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, so, uh, your field of evangelism, what is it? Or where is it? What is your God-given talent? You know what? God's going to use that to extend His kingdom on earth. So think about it. Pray about it. But uh, even if you think that you don't have anything right now, you're not going to inherit anything even in the future. Don't worry, you will inherit the kingdom of God. And if you find your field of evangelism, your inheritance, your earthly inheritance will come from that field. You know what? There's a, uh, there's a head of a, uh, uh, a Christian, it's called Herald Economics, anyway, uh, the president of a newspaper company wants to give me a piece of land just because I'm doing healing ministry. He's offering me a piece of land. It's kind of far away. It's in Palmdale. So, so, so uh, I said, oh, okay, great. <laughs> and, but that was it because I don't think I could travel that far. I don't think I could live there, right? <laughs> Uh, from Palmdale to Fullerton, it's, it's a little bit far, don't you think? <laughs> but these are the kind of opportunities that God is giving me. 
But am I just talking about myself? No, I'm talking about all of you. Right? So, uh, pray. Pray, uh, but seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you Amen. as well. Let me pray. Father God, thank you for uh, giving us the inheritance of God, but uh, we also ask for earthly inheritance that we may contribute to the kingdom of God and for evangelism. Uh, we pray this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.